Hey everyone, it's John Reed here from Learn to Stargaze and author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope and the upcoming book, 110 Things to See with a Telescope, a book that takes you on a tour of Charles Messier's famous objects, one target at a time. So it's summertime and I'm working just outside of Washington DC this summer and I wasn't able to bring my larger scopes from Nova Scotia. So when I saw this six inch Dobsonian on Facebook Marketplace, I had to pick it up. Let's check it out. This is Learn to Stargaze. So if you've watched my videos or read my books, you've probably heard over and over that a moderately sized Dobsonian is the best all around beginner telescope. And yes, I did recommend a four inch refractor in a previous video, but there was a caveat. That scope was at a very specific entry level price point. I've also recommended the Schmidt Cassegrain telescope as a beginner telescope for those who have thousands of dollars to spare. But the Dobsonian is the best all around beginner telescope, but it's not perfect. So for a moment, I want to go over some pros and cons of the Dobsonian versus some more traditional telescopes. Con, their size. Dobs are typically pretty big versus a classic refractor especially the type that are often more decorative than functional. Dobsonians are very functional, but someone once asked me why I keep my hot water heater in my living room. I think some people are more fascinated by how a telescope looks than the telescope's performance. Pro, ease of use. Dobsonians are by far the easiest telescope to use. I mean, they're like the iPad in the telescope world. They basically just work. Just make sure the finder and the telescope are pointed at exactly the same spot. Aim on a bright star, make sure the telescope is in proper focus, and you're good to go. Con, they need to be collimated. You can learn to do this by eye or with a $20 laser you bought on Amazon. But it's something you need to learn to do. There are several videos online on how to do this, so I won't go into that here. Pro, value. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. The Dobsonian offers the most light gathering power per dollar spent than any other telescope design. That doesn't mean it's the cheapest telescope. A six inch Dobsonian new is generally between 300 and 400 dollars. The eight inch version, which is the one amateur astronomers typically recommend, is around 400 dollars. Now I paid $150 for this, and I also have the eight inch version of the exact same scope, and I bought that one used as well, and I paid $200. If you're buying one of these scopes used, don't forget to negotiate. The seller may just be cleaning out their garage and will be happy to let go of it. Unfortunately, below this price point, there are so many terrible telescopes on the market that it's challenging to find the diamonds in the rough. A lot of people ask me about a certain sub $200 telescope asking me if such and such design is any good, and the answer is almost always no. Pro, how much you can see in a single night. I found by far the fastest way to see targets, particularly deep sky objects, is to use a Dobsonian and a stargazing guidebook. This is far faster than using astronomy apps or guiding software. During my observation sessions, I'll typically explore between 30 and 40 targets. On other nights when I'm using a computerized scope, half of my session is taking up simply setting up the telescope and troubleshooting along the way. Anyway, now to this particular telescope. This is the Orion SkyQuest XT6 Classic Dobsonian Telescope. And like all Dobsonians, it sits on a lazy Susan, but unlike my larger 12 inch version made by a different company, this scope has a pair of springs on each side. These both hold the scope to the base and it also helps provide a very sturdy view. They seem to take out any vibration that you might otherwise experience. It's also nice because you can carry the scope around in one piece, something you can't do with many other Dobsonians. Now this telescope came with a red dot style finder, which I'd say is the second easiest type of finder to use. I might swap this out for a bullseye finder like the Celestron Star Pointer Pro or a Rigel Quick Finder or even a Telrad. This telescope only comes with one eyepiece and it's a 25 millimeter Plossel, which provides decent views. Coupled with this scope's 1200 millimeter focal length, this gives a magnification of about 48 times, which is perfect for finding and observing most deep sky objects. 
Unlike larger versions of this scope, this Stepsonian does not give the option to use larger two inch diameter eyepieces. So if you like to use those nice big eyepieces, you'll have to go with the eight inch version of this scope or larger. The interesting thing about this scope is the focal ratio they've chosen. Focal ratio is the relationship between the length of the scope and the aperture. This is F8, whereas the larger eight inch Debsonians tend to come in at around F6. The 10 inch and 12 inch Debsonians are around F5. I'm guessing they chose these focal ratios for two reasons. First, because these telescopes are designed to be set on the ground and often used while standing up. Having a 1200 millimeter focal ratio places the eyepiece at a relatively comfortable height for both kids and adults. Smaller telescopes tend to be designed to sit on tables and larger Dobsonians like the 12 inch require a stool for kids or adults that aren't that tall. The higher focal ratio also gives this scope a higher natural magnification for a given eyepiece. A lot of the tabletop Newtonians you might find are around F4 with short focal ratios. This is great for wide field views, but planets often appear small unless you use very high powered eyepieces. Now, speaking of magnification, there is a rule of thumb for telescopes called the maximum effective magnification. You can estimate this by doubling the aperture of your telescope in millimeters. For example, this scope has six inches of aperture, which is about 150 millimeters. Therefore, the maximum effective magnification is 300. If you wanted to view Saturn, for example, at this maximum magnification, you might choose an eight millimeter eyepiece with a 2X Barlow. Magnifications greater than this would provide a less than pleasing image. But for the most part, when viewing star clusters, galaxies, and nebula, sticking around 50X to 100 times magnification is more than sufficient. So how well does this telescope work? Well, Dobsonians aren't designed to take cool pictures of space, so you'll just have to take my word for it. But I tested the scope out here in my father-in-law's backyard just outside Washington, D.C. The sky was partly cloudy and the seeing and transparency were poor. However, I was able to see M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, M13, the Great Globular Cluster in Hercules, and double stars like Albireo and Mizar and Alcor without much problem. Overall, I was very impressed with the views I was able to get with this telescope from the suburbs. I also used this telescope to view Jupiter and Saturn. Now they were behind a little bit of haze, but the view was pretty good nonetheless about what you'd expect from a telescope of this size. And what was really cool is that the space station also passed over while I was out here testing this telescope. And the cool thing about Dobsonians is that you can easily follow satellites across the sky while looking through the eyepiece it may take a little practice, but it's a lot of fun. As the space station zipped through my field of view, I simply pushed the scope to follow it along. The space station through this scope looks like a tiny but really bright rectangle zipping across the background stars at incredible speed. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Orion XT6 Classic Dobsonian Telescope. Please subscribe to Learn to Stargate so you don't miss any future videos. And if you have a telescope, definitely check out 50 things to see with a telescope, a young stargazer's guide, or the new 110 things to see with a telescope. And remember, the future is looking up. Hey everyone, it's John Reed here again from Learn to Stargaze. Now, if you're watching this and it's August of 2021, we have a very special fundraiser for St. Jude Mission Inspire. This month, if you purchase my book, 50 things to see on the moon, or Dr. Tanya Harrison and Dr. Danny Bednar's book for all humankind. We will be donating 100% of our royalties to St. Jude Mission Inspire. So check out these two books and support this amazing children's research hospital. And remember, the future is looking up.